Do you have a high GGT level like this or something similar? Maybe it's a little lower, maybe it's a little higher. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, I am going to discuss the actual cause behind high GGT level, what its importance is in detoxification and in your body in general. I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but it's not specifically tailored for your needs. So please read this video disclaimer before we get into the details. So I got a question from a viewer, Critter Clips, and it says, the ALT and AST are okay, but my GGT is 186. So what she's asking is, what is actually behind high GGT levels? So I wanted to answer this question in a little more depth. So here's a video about what's actually behind or what causes high GGT liver enzymes. Remember, the optimal level for GGT is going to be less than 25 and possibly even lower than that. So what could be going on in your body when your GGT is high, but your AST and ALT, which are other liver enzymes, are normal? Now remember, those ones should be less than 25 as well, and the reference range for those are usually much higher in the 40s, sometimes even the 50s, depending on which lab you use. So GGT liver enzyme is gamma glutamyl transferase, and it's a liver enzyme that plays a critical role in transferring of amino acids across cell membranes. And it's primarily found in liver, but it can also be found in tissues like kidney, pancreas, and spleen. And it plays an important role in things like detoxification and neutralizing oxidative stress through its connection with glutathione production. Higher amounts in the blood suggest that the liver is dealing with more toxin, but also that the liver is upregulating its production of this liver enzyme. And it's going to do that based on either one, increased oxidative stress, or two, increased toxic load or toxic bird. Glutathione, if you don't know, is critical for both of these things. It helps with the process of reducing oxidative stress and eliminating toxins. The glutathione molecule goes through a process of oxidation when it's neutralizing toxins and free radicals in the body. And once the glutathione is oxidized, it needs to be recycled back into its reduced form so that it may continue to work as an antioxidant. So where does GGT come in? Well, GGT is involved in the recycling process. Specifically, it breaks down extracellular glutathione into its constituent amino acids, cysteine, glutamic acid, and glycine. And it takes the gamma glutamyl group off of the glutathione, allowing for the cysteine and other amino amino acids to be used to make more glutathione. So if you have more GGT levels or higher GGT levels, it implies more toxic exposure, which could be coming from alcohol or chemical exposure and other things like persistent organic pollutants that are often abbreviated as POPs. Some examples of persistent organic pollutants are going to be pesticides, polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs, dioxins, and basically a lot of the plastics and toxins that persist in the environment and are slow to break down or get eliminated. So what we have to keep in mind with the elevations in GGT is that it's a very sensitive test meaning that it moves up and down very reliably with increased need for glutathione. And it can also go down just as quickly as it goes up. The GGT liver enzymes are so sensitive that many doctors don't even run the test because it picks up on a lot of these anomalies that are not true liver disease. Maybe they're just going to be transient kind of blips. However, while it may only be elevated transiently or for a short period of time, that's not a very good reason to avoid doing the test. And even if it is only elevated for a short period of time, it's also not a good thing for it to be elevated. So here's an excerpt from a review article on glutathione by by Dr. Pizorn. It states that GGT is upregulated in proportion to the need for glutathione, such as detoxification of POPs. It provides rate-limiting cysteine through catabolism of a salvage pathway, which is referring to cysteine's role in glutathione production. Increases in GGT correlate with many different diseases, metabolic syndrome, both fatal and non-fatal coronary heart disease events, atherosclerosis, fatty liver, diabetes, cancer, hypertension, etc. Of particular note, these are elevations of GGT within supposed normal range. For example, men with GGT of 
40 to 50 have a 20-fold increased risk for diabetes. Research also shows that GGT in the 30 to 40 range is associated with doubling risk of all-cause mortality. So for sure, we should reconsider the reference range for some of these liver enzymes, including GGT. And when it's high, it suggests that your body is in need or demanding more glutathione. Now, typically when I see an elevated GGT, what this means to me is that the body is undergoing some sort of toxic exposure and you want to find that and eliminate it. You can provide the body with more glutathione through various methodologies, but that's sort of like just putting a Band-Aid on it. It's not going to ever go away until that toxic exposure is removed. Now, if you know what the toxic exposure is and it's just going to be a short period of time, then maybe something like taking exogenous glutathione may be the right way to go. Finding and understanding what the underlying cause is for that increased GGT is what's going to help you resolve the elevation. Check out my other videos on elevated liver enzymes. There's even ones on how to reduce elevated liver enzymes. Now, I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, and hopefully this video has delivered on that. If you're finding these videos useful and helpful in your health journey, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to get more videos like this one. That's all I had on this video, the actual cause of high GGT liver enzymes.